Talia Tonga Valoa has entered the transfer portal, and we gotta talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that that corner sh. <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we got to talk about the bomb. Talia Tonga Valoa and Matt Zenitz at AL.com dropped on all of us in News Dump Friday evenings. Because if you ever want to put something out that you don't want a whole lot of people to know about, you do it on Friday evening after everybody going home from work and just before the 6 o'clock news so they can't change their rundown or they go and try to do a, a little bit on it and then it tries to dissipate throughout the weekend. But since this is Talia Tonga Valoa, it ain't going to do that, homie. That's not what it's going to be. That is the heir apparent, so many thought, to Tua's throne. You know, Tua Tonga Valoa, you know, the dude that was taken in the NFL draft and first 10 pick, the dude that's going to play for the Miami Dolphins. We're the single digit number one for the Miami Dolphins. The dude for which his whole family was decked out in Hawaii in lays and in the nice suits and looking stoic during the NFL draft. I'm like, man, Papa Tonga Valoa must not play. Papa Tonga Valoa looked like the kind of dude walk around with the belt just flashing the leather, just pop, pop, just in case somebody was thinking about getting Brody. I mean, them children behind looking like they was, they were stricken. Meanwhile... We got Talia Tonga Valoa, who went 9-12 for 100 yards last year in some relief, right? Following up Mac Jones whenever they was thumping up on Arkansas, whomever it might be that they was getting over on when Tua Tonga Valoa went down with, you know, the blown out hip against the Mississippi State, where the Mississippi State folks didn't decide they don't care that you number one overall pick or caliber of being number one overall pick. They don't care your first round selection. They don't care you all American. They don't care that you were supposed to win the Heisman Trophy. They care about putting you in the ground, boy. Now, with... Talia Tonga Valoa, we're going, oh, wow, that's how scared of Bryce Young they are up there in Alabama. To be fair, Bryce Young, number one recruit in the country, according to the top 247. That is voted on by the ranking council. That includes a bevy of dudes that I absolutely trust to get this stuff right. That said, Bryce Young better be the goods. He better be real with the goods. He better be the best goods. And Mac Jones, Mac Jones like, cool, bye, bye, baby. See about ya. See about ya, Talia, because it's just him, Paul Tyson, and then Bryce Young. Bryce Young being the early enrollee. Bryce Young, five-star recruit. Bryce Young coming out of modern day. Bryce Young, who was committed to USC, decommitted from USC, ends up at Alabama. Also, Bryce Young, who didn't want any parts of Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma and wanted to go to a place where he was going to have an opportunity to start. You know what happened? The four-star recruit out of Thompson, Alabama, that is Talia Tungvaloa, wanted that to happen as well. Now, he ain't as big as his brother. Doesn't have the arm of his brother has. And I thought that at the opening in 2018, it looked like it was really good business to be to his little brother. I kept looking at him going, how does this dude get an offer at Alabama, let alone a scholarship to Alabama? And then he looked not bad at Alabama. All things all things told, he, he looked pretty okay. He looked pretty decent. I did not think that he would leave after his sophomore season, though. And now with him into the transfer portal, I am so excited to see about where he might end up. Because, yo, man, it looked like the Tonga Valoa household was a Bama household, kind of like the Bear Bryant household looks like a Bama household. It looked kind of locked up. But now that Talia is in play, I am fascinated to know which program is going to take a look at one Talia Tonga Valoa. Because most of the programs that he would want to go to kind of have a succession plan in place, right? Say Clemson. Nope, that's DJ Uyungagale, right? That's that man. Uh, you might want to take a look at perhaps Miami, maybe, because De'Ara King going to be gone after this year. Maybe you think, oh, nope, USC, they got a succession plan. They also got a succession plan up in Washington. They also got a succession plan. Oh, Washington State, is that really where you want to go? Play for Nick Rolovich, running the, the run and shoot, right? And that Rainbow Warrior offense that he is taking to the Cougs. There's some places out there for which it would be interesting, but I don't think that any of them are going to be the caliber of program that Alabama is, because still, still Alabama, right? And it's not as if he wouldn't have an opportunity to compete for the job, but it should be stated, Bryce Young, for me, was always going to end the season as a starting quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide, even if he did not start the season as the starting quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide. I think Mac Jones is going to get that, that Cooper Bateman treatment. I think he's going to get that Blake Barnett treatment, you know? I think he's going to get moved up off the seat. And I think Mac Jones knows this, right? He, nobody is 
under any sort of illusions as to what Mac Jones could do. Now, if he ends up out dueling Bryce Young for the job, you know that they also have a pretty outstanding quarterback in him because that's what it's going to take because Bryce Young is just that capable. But as we take a look at Talia and what is on tap for him, maybe at Houston where Clayton Toon is going to be out, right? Maybe you want to take a look around say SMU after Shane Bouchelle gets done. But like I said, none of these programs are Alabama. None of these programs are going to be competing for a college football playoff semifinal plot. That means that Talia Tungvaloa might never play in a college football playoff semifinal. Because, look, we're talking about Clemson, Oklahoma, Alabama, Ohio State, maybe Oregon, right? Being in there. Outside of that, I don't see any Michigan State's. It ain't like you're going to end up in Notre Dame, although that would be interesting, right? And knowing what we know about the Tonga Valoas and how closely guarded they are about their intentions or what they're going to do and how close they are to their faith, among other things, I would I would venture maybe Baylor, right? Follow up a Charlie Brewer, play for Dave Aranda and get that Dave Aranda defense going, that Larry Fedora offense that... Hell, it vaulted Mitch Trubisky into the number two overall pick in the draft. And we all know that Mitch Trubisky ain't no prize. Talia Tongavaloa can at least be as good or better than Mitch Trubisky. That said, they just got a 2021 dude that they really, really like, right? But you look around the SEC, Mississippi State feels like a good place for him because KJ Costello is going to be the guy this year, right? You like to see Talia Tongavaloa in the air raid offense? I think it could work out. I don't know that Papa Tongavaloa is going to get along with Mike Leach because Mike Leach is a little bit out there even by Mississippi State standards, but we could see it. I mean, there's so many options out here that we can really talk about that I find interesting, right? And I think it could work. But I also think that getting little Tongavaloa onto your campus is not going to be the same thing as getting... Tua onto your campus because Tua's allegiance is going to be to Nick Saban and going to be to Alabama. And I'm sure that they're going to say all the nice things about Alabama and about Nick Saban and about that program. But my goodness, does this one, this one kind of stings if you're Nick Saban because you, you thought that if nothing else, they would see the process through, right? Because even Jalen Hurts stayed through to graduate from the University of Alabama before grad transferring and went out, you know, on everybody's good terms. It's funny how everybody feels really good about a grad transfer. They feel bad about somebody else who transferred. That said, there's three dudes that have basically transferred out of the Alabama Crimson Tide program this spring, right? Night or not, uh, we got Scott Lashley, you know? I mean, not dudes that are name brands outside of Tuscaloosa, but certainly guys that could help you. Again, I'm interested. What do you think about what's going on with Talia Tongavaloa and what's going on inside of Nick Saban's program in the age of the virus? Because everybody's having to do the Zoom. Everybody's having to do the Instagrams. Everybody's having to do the Twitters. And we just learned that Nick Saban just got an email account in 2020. And the only way that he got an email account is because we in a virus? Yo, what are we doing, Nick Saban? Who are you doing this to? Why are you doing it this way? And what do the parents and the kids think? Because isn't it auspicious that Talia Tongvaloa waited until the semester was ended to let everybody know that he was going into the transfer portal. Hmm. Waited until after the NFL draft where his brother was, you know, taking the first five picks by the Miami Dolphins to go and be their quarterback and perhaps not cause waves or cause Nick Saban to speak out of turn about the Tongvaloas, particularly uh, how they are conducting themselves throughout the transfer portal process. But Here's the other thing. I'll bet Nick Saban knew that this thing was headed this way the whole time and might have wanted to keep it under wraps or was probably doing the Nick Saban thing and trying to recruit him back to the fold, back to Tuscaloosa. But here to tell you, the way that I think this is going to be absolutely positively cool, let Talia Tagovailoa end up in Tennessee. Let it happen. And then let him be the dude to get them a win for the first time since 2006. Then it'd be all about it. It'd be so much fun. I'm here for all the fun. I'm trying to, ooh, or make it even better. Maybe Talia Tonga Baloa makes it a real, real deep quarterback room at Georgia. Carson Beck, Brock Vandegrift. And yeah, Talia Tonga Baloa. Dwan Mathis. <laughs> now I'm wishful thinking because I just kind of want the, the, the greasy wheels to get cogged up in the SEC machine because it's fun. And this is funny. And if you're not having fun with this, I don't understand how you cannot. It's Friday night. Have a good time. All right, that's it for me. And no, it's not there for me. I got to add one more thing in here. <laughs> Isn't this the time when you want the transport portal to work for you, not to see your dudes go in? Isn't this the time? 
You want to see Nick Saban taking news out of the portal, not putting them in. All right. Now I'm done. Deuces.